Hi everybody. I'm recording this uh, little lesson in my kitchen and so the dogs are here with me and I hope they don't bark and interrupt us but you might hear them occasionally. This lesson is a review lesson from last year on developing good seminar questions. So let's say you've picked a topic you picked a reading, sorry, or you picked an artwork, or you picked a piece of music, and now you're ready to write questions. Well, the first thing that you need to do is gather some supplies. You want a copy of Bloom's Taxonomy. You want a tablet or some paper and a pe something to write with. You want your seminar story that you have already just read and annotated kind of at least once. Um, maybe you've read it twice, but you've read it at least once, and it is an annotated copy. Um, so the first thing that you're going to do when you sit down with your text, the second, oh, and the last thing you need is a partner, um, especially if you're starting out, especially if um, you've gotten some feedback that your seminar questions need to be broader, pick a partner. Have somebody across the country on the phone, you know, that you set up a phone date and a, it, that you'll get to. Um, for the first step, you're going to do this alone, though. But eventually, you're going to need a partner who's reading the same story and coming up with the same kinds of questions that you are. Okay, so as you read the story the second time, you're going to sit with your pencil and your tablet, and you're going to just jot down as many things. You're going to go through the story, jot down as many things from your annotations or from your second reading as you can. Identify themes and main ideas. What is the theme of the cycle? Make sure that fits. What are the seven gateways that, you're, um, uh, that you can focus on with this reading? Uh, what other Montessori text can you connect with it? Um, write those down and then begin to start grouping your questions together. So you've written a whole bunch of stuff on a piece of paper um, and now you're going to see that, oh, in the first part of the story it, talked, it mentioned this or talked about this and in the second part of the story um, or the last part of the story it comes up again. And so that's a good place to write down uh, or to look for a question. And even if you can't formulate a question, Write something down, because when you meet with your partner, you'll be able to flush those things out. Don't judge your questions right now. Just write. Um, then consider if, you know, as you're doing this, consider if there's more themes, as you're trying to draw connections, as you're trying to formulate questions. Um, write down anything you can, any of those main ideas or themes um, that you have. And if you're seeing core questions or big ideas come from these things, jot those down as well. Then you're going to contact your friend. Maybe that's another day. Maybe that's later in the same day. Uh, you might want to, I like to sleep on things. I always get um, better perspective when I do. So together with you and your partner, you're going to talk about those questions that you wrote. Um, it might be helpful if you're far away to email them to each other, if you're not together, that you email them to each other so that you have copies of each other's. And you look those over and you actually start discussing some of the questions. You don't have to go through all of them, but especially some of the ones that um, you want to try out. And if you and your partner can start having some different perspectives on the same question, the, the responses to the same question, it's going to be something that you want to keep and you want to make as a, as a good seminar question. Now, for your good seminar questions, remember that your question has to be something that you want kids to consider for themselves. So it should not be something that you have in your mind that you want to get across to them. Um, the, a good seminar question also should be about a big idea. So ask yourself, is this about a big idea? Is it worth talking about or not? Um, is the question, does the question, sorry, lead us back to the text to search for evidence in either the story or the essay, what the author believes, um, is it a universal viewpoint, etc. Um, does it have several possible answers or does it have just one? You want it to have at least two possible viewpoints. And sometimes the answers could be the same, but the justification could be very, very different. And that's where you'll get your big questions. Um, and finally, does the question take us beyond what just sharing our personal story? So we definitely want it to do that. All right. 
Um, so you've done that with your partner. That's probably going to take you an hour maybe. And then um, you'll, and, and these are not necessarily distinct steps. At some point, you're going to want to start identifying your special questions. And remember that those special questions are three. There is your writing question, your opening question, and your closing question. And each one has a different purpose and a different role to play in seminar. So your writing question is going to be the question that you give to students to ponder, to think about, to journal about, to fast write um, as they leave other activities and they join the seminar group. What indeed will they, uh, ha what do they need, to, they need to leave behind all that other stuff, their social studies graphing lesson that they've just done, their, um, you know, their data collection, whatever. That has to be left behind because now they're going to focus on a reading. It has to offer a personal connection um, to the theme. It should somehow. It should be related somehow to what's going on. But again, it can also, it has to be something that everybody can relate to. Most of you are pretty good at writing opening questions. Um, and one way around that, if you remember from last year, could be to write the question in the form of, have you or anyone you know, whatever, finished the sentence, ever stolen something that you weren't supposed to, so that they don't have to tell on themselves or so that they're not in a position to not be able to think um, and relate to whatever's happening in the story. Okay. That's writing questions. They don't necessarily need to be shared in the seminar group. They could be, but they don't need to be. All right, the second question that you're going to write, uh, that you're going to identify, are the questions that you think will get the kids into the story and start the discussion. Um, this is your opening question, the question that you're going to start with. In some cases, it might be your writing question, especially at the beginning with new seminar participants. You might want to start there just to get them talking. Uh, it depends, again, on how far you are into the, your school year, how interested they are in the reading, how many questions the kids have come with. But you still, despite whether you prepare questions or not, I'm sorry, despite whether you have kids present questions or not, you need to make sure that um, you are, have prepared stuff for them to do. So your opening question typically is not going to be a big idea question. You don't want to scare them off. You don't want to say, um, what is truth? That's really too big. But you might want to um, start by talking about uh, someone in the story who's dealing with lying and truth-telling and white lies or whatever, the, if that's the issue that you're dealing with. Um, the opening question should also create a reference to the text so that the discussion begins right in the text. Let's look at page 19, where the character says this or where the narrator says this, and then ask your question. All right, the final kind of question that you need to um, think about when you're doing this are, is your closing question. Now, your closing question, different teachers do different kinds of closing for seminar. Oftentimes, um, it's, you can just ask anybody to give one final statement. Um, you could ask, uh, you know, in just one sentence, just so that everybody has a chance to speak. You could um, do that as a whip around. You could do that as an optional. I would um, uh, mix it up so that it's not all. They're not always expecting a whip around. Sometimes your closing question sends them off to do a writing assignment if it's related to a project that you're doing in class or some curricular activity or the theme of the, of the, of the cycle. Um, but it's something where everyone um, can at least share or think about the final things that they may have to say. Um, finally, you want to type up your questions. I like to type up the little scaffolding questions if I need to make sure that everybody understands a word in the reading or a concept or an idea, especially if it's a historical thing um, from the 60s or the 70s or the 80s that they're not familiar with. Um, you want to have some time to give some background and let some kids share what they know about things like that. 
Um, you can also do that in a pre-seminar session as well. But make sure that you're, you're clustering things so that eventually you can check off on your sheet, yes, we've covered the idea of truth. They may not have asked my exact questions or discussed my exact questions, but um, they've seen them. So I've given you a little more than 10 minutes here of review, and I'm sure that some of you are going to have additional questions. Uh, and you can see me during class. All right. Happy question writing.